grace and peace to you from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear fellow redeemed, in your mind what is worse? You tell your child to clean their room, and they cross their arms and say to you, make me. Or the child does clean their room, but then they shout at you and say, I hate you, and I will never make my children do this. What is worse? A member of a congregation who commands that everything be done their way or else, or a member who constantly complains and criticizes about the congregation, but does nothing to contribute to help out. What is worse? A pastor who serves a congregation, but he doesn't do it out of love for the people. He does it to receive money and praise. Or a pastor who refuses to serve until he is paid more and gets more appreciation for what he does. Now sure, maybe in our minds we can think that one scenario is worse than the other. But I bring this up to make us think that both parties in these scenarios are doing what is wrong. None of us would say to those people, well done, good servant. And apply that to the last day when Jesus returns to judge the living and the dead. Jesus will divide the world into two different sections. To the one he will say, well done, good servant. And to the other, he will say, Depart from me, you evil, wicked servant. Which makes us wonder what God will say to us on that last day of judgment. Well, as we look at this parable from Jesus, we will see how and why Jesus will say to us, Well done, good servant. But before we even begin to look at this parable, we need to understand the context of why Jesus spoke this parable. We were told while they were listening to this, he went on to tell them a parable. Because he was near Jerusalem, and the people thought that the kingdom of God was going to appear at once. Jesus is about to enter into Jerusalem. And when he did riding on a donkey, the people praised him. They placed their cloaks on the ground. They waved their palm branches, hailing him as their king. But they thought that Jesus was going to establish an earthly kingdom for the Jews at this time and would then punish the Romans who were ruling over them. This is why Jesus spoke this parable. And in this parable, Jesus is teaching us three main things. Just as the master in this parable left to become a king and then return, Jesus is teaching us that his kingdom would not be established right away, but later on. Second, Jesus is teaching us that those who serve him, he will reward. And third, Jesus is teaching us that those who disobey him, he will condemn. These are the basic things that Jesus is teaching us. So in this parable, we have a man of noble birth who travels to a distant country to be made king. Therefore, he brings ten of his servants together and gives each one of them a mina. But what exactly is a mina? A mina was a coin that was worth three months of salary. Imagine having a single coin or a dollar bill that equal to thousands of dollars that you work for. And the very fact that he gives ten minas to his servants 
equals about three years worth of salary. That's an incredible amount of money. But he entrusts this money to his servants so that they can put this money to work until he returns. But not everyone wanted their master to become king. Some of them sent a delegation demanding that this master wouldn't be made a king. But this delegation failed. And so when their master and king returned, he brought the servants back together and asked them what they had done with his money. The first one came and said, Sir, your mina has earned ten more. The master and king commended him and rewarded his servant by having him rule over ten cities. The second servant came and said, Sir, your mina has earned five more. Once again, the master commends this servant and rewards him by having him rule over five cities. But then the third servant came and said to his master, Sir, here is your mina. I have kept it laid away in a place of cloth. I was afraid of you because you are a hard man. You take out what you did not put in and reap what you did not sow. This servant was afraid of his master and therefore he did nothing with the mina. And possibly he was thinking that since he didn't lose any money, the master would commend and reward him. But when the master heard this, he became furious. And he said, I will judge you by your own words, you wicked servant. You knew, did you, that I am a hard man. Why then didn't you put my money on deposit? so that when I came back, I could have collected it with interest. The master called out the stupidity of his servant. If this servant wanted to do nothing, then the servant could have put the mina in the bank, and he could have done nothing. And in return, this master could still reserve, receive some interest on that money. And notice that what the master condemns his servant for is not the fact that he didn't gain any money from that minor. He condemns his servant because his servant was indifferent to the money he had received. He was indifferent to God's command, or actually to his master's command. And so the master stripped everything from this servant, gave it to others, and those who sent the delegation who didn't want him to be king, the master put them to death. So now apply all of what Jesus is teaching us in this parable to us. Jesus will return to judge the living and the dead. And will he say to us, well done, good servant? Or will he say, you evil, wicked servant? We all know what God should say to us. God has given us various gifts and talents. He tells us to use these gifts and talents out of love for him and love out of others. He is not telling us to use our gifts and talents with the sole purpose of having massive amounts of success. He simply wants us to use these gifts. But do we? We can be indifferent to God's command and indifferent to the gifts and talents He has given to us. And think of how stupid and foolish that is. Because our God is just and our God is love. 
Our God is just who punishes wrong. Therefore, this should motivate us to serve God simply out of fear that we use our gifts and our talents to try to appease God's justice. But we can be indifferent to God's justice. We can downplay it. We can think, well, God doesn't really care what I do. God's not paying attention to what I do in my life. God can't punish me for doing nothing. And our God is love, who forgives wrong. This should motivate us all the more to use the gifts and talents that God has given us. But we can even be indifferent to God's love. We can think that we are to simply receive God's love and refuse to pour out that love upon others. And since we can be indifferent to God's command, indifferent to the gifts and talents that we have received, God should strip everything from us on that last day of judgment. And even if we think at that moment we could bring up all of our good deeds to God to appease His justice, God can easily say to us, by my power and wisdom I gave you these gifts and you hardly ever thank me for it. I even gave you opportunities to serve, and you refused to do it. And even the good that you have done, I know your heart. You didn't always do it out of love for me or love for others. You did it out of love for yourself. Therefore, I do not know you. Depart from me, you evil, wicked servant. And that is why we should be afraid of God's great judgment day. But we have no fear. Because we have one who is the ultimate good servant. And his name is Jesus. Jesus stripped his divine glory and majesty. He made himself nothing in order to become our servant. Every gift and talent that God gave to Jesus, he used. Every opportunity that God gave to Jesus, he made use of those opportunities to show love to God and love for others. And once again, remember the context of this parable. Jesus is about to enter into Jerusalem, and within a few days, he would be on the cross. Jesus was stripped of all of his dignity. Even his clothes were stripped from him as he witnessed the soldiers casting lots to win his clothing. He was stripped of all respect. Because everyone who passed by hurled insults at him and said, well, he could save others, so let him save himself. He was stripped of all divine love because he cried out that God had forsaken him. But everything was stripped away from Jesus so that he could give us the salvation that he had won and earned for us. Because of Jesus, we are saved on Judgment Day. Because what saves us is not what we do. What saves us is our faith in Jesus, who has done everything. But since we are saved because of Jesus, then what's the point of doing good works? What's the point? of using the gifts and talents that God has given us? What's the point of God saying to us, well done, good servant? While though our good deeds do not save us, every good deed that we do is evidence of our faith. As Christians, 
We simply love to serve. When we see opportunities to use our gifts and talents, we gladly do it. We may not always do it perfectly, but it's what we desire. And sometimes we don't even think about how to use our gifts and talents. Sometimes we don't even remember the good that we do. But Jesus remembers that. And on the last day, Jesus will not bring up any wrong that you and I have done. He will not bring up how we have been indifferent to his commands. The only thing that Jesus will bring up for us believers is every good deed that we have done. And why would Jesus even do that when Scripture tells us that all of our good deeds are like filthy rags? Jesus will bring them up simply because he sees that we do these good deeds out of love. And so now let me ask you, in your mind, what is greater? A child who cleans their room and tells his or her parents, I love you? Or a member who no longer commands things be done his or her way, but bends over backwards for other members? Or a pastor who serves a congregation out of love for the members. In the end, it doesn't matter which one is greater. Because all of these people are serving out of love. You would say to those people, well done, good servant. And that's what Jesus will say to us. What do we do out of love for God? We do it because God first loved us and gave us His salvation. And so Jesus will remember every good thing that you have done. He will rejoice in you. And He will say, Well done, good servant. Amen. Please rise.